We'll talk about how monkeys are winning, how Adam Aaron discovered the truth about FTDs, and how the deal is likely to drive the share price up well above 79 today. Make sure to watch the entire video because it covers a lot more territory. Let's take a quick look at this article since it contains breaking news. Regarding AMC FTDs, Adam Aaron recently said the following, I must exercise extreme caution in what I say. We have reached the highest levels of the NICER and FINRA, and we are unable to share with you what we have learned from Adam Aaron. He stated this in his earnings course, which you can all go and see for yourself, but in essence, this is what he said. We are now discussing FTDs since, as you are aware, we spoke with FINRA regarding NYSC, and we need to speak with FINRA regarding both of these FTDs. For a long time, Adam Aaron has been asked by retail investors to discuss these FTDs so that he may go out and expose more of it. Once more, it seems that he has discovered something that could be extremely, extremely, extremely large, but he is not allowed to reveal it, probably because to what NYSE or FINRA have informed him. In addition to the fact that the FTDs currently in circulation are already on day 33, which gives us six more days before day 39, we have already learned on this channel about the corruption that goes into FTDs and how they can utilize borrowed shares to cover the prior FTDs, among other things. This certainly needs to be addressed since, as we all know, it needs to be covered after 30 or 13 days of FTDs, but it has extended into the possible days of 32 and possibly 33, 39. Therefore, you know, we need to really grasp what's happening at the moment, and Adam has information about that that I think he's not allowed to disclose. Now isn't so bad since I do believe he can use it to leverage it for us to utilize later on when discussing the FTD's difficulties, which I believe might be very significant in the near future, especially given what's happening right now. We'll talk about retail being correct and apes winning next. This chart plus the recent developments, including earnings, should only indicate one thing to you if you have been following the AMC train for some time. We are winning. The market may see a large number of short squids led by the shortest stocks, AMC and GME, as a result of AMC's turn on profit-breaking records, a noteworthy 32 self-reported short interest, and the worried attempts of many market participants to synchronize 200 EMA breakouts in mid- and small-cap sectors. Foreign businesses, however, have already paid 200 EMA and are currently synchronizing candidate AAS with the remaining IWM shocks. He doesn't think poorly of his own company. He is only following the rules of the market and helping his rich friends. An organic advance above the 200 EMA and stability are the best indicators of an infinity squeeze. Don't worry, I'm meticulously documenting every action and giving updates. User Ventilate has been giving excellent course information, due diligence, and analysis in the background. And this is clearly what we're discussing. Let's now take another look at the self-reported short interest and the positive EPS, which both demonstrate how well AMC is performing. However, bear in mind that this is purely self-reported, as I have mentioned multiple times on this channel. At 32%, the self-reported figure is most likely the lowest that can be found. Because they might be shorting 50, but if they're using offshore firms, they can self-report that it's only 32, when in hindsight, it's actually 50, 60, 70, or even 80. For this reason, self-reported data is given the minimum at this time. And the fact that the minimum is still 32 should obviously indicate how well we're doing and why we're winning as apes now when it comes to discussing AMC going to 79 per share and even higher. So let's examine this from Wall Street Butcher, discusses when AMC last issued shares. Over a few days in May and June of 2021, Intraday trading saw the stock rise from 10 to 79 per share. I agree with CEO Adam when he states that AMC has over $2 billion in liquidity funds at the conclusion of the June 30, 2021 quarter, either in the bank or on the drawn revolving credit line. This is about twice as much liquidity as AMC has ever had in its 101-year history. Naturally, this refers to June 30th. But we must first remember that they managed to increase their share price from 10 to 79 and concluded the quarter with over $2 billion in liquidity. Now we have to understand that with this particular settlement that we have right now, it's estimated that the money we can raise can be up to $16 billion. So it would be 
eight times higher than what they have ended in terms of the $2 billion of liquidity because they will end up with more than $16 billion of liquidity. And again, even if they were to put $4 billion into the debt, they are still left with $12 billion, which is still six times higher. So if we take into that consideration about how AMC can govern $10 to $79 with only $2 billion of cash in terms of the positivity, the bullish sentiment raised by that, Understand how much we can go with six times, with eight times more liquidity. You know, it's not as simple as just doing 79 times. Or even if in this case, well, let's use 80 of 80 times by six of $80 times by eight. But regardless, I think, you know, if we were to do it like that, I still think if we were to do it like that, you know, we could be looking at 80 times by six. We could be looking at 80 times by six. Eight, which is, of course, 640. But if we don't, and we just understand the bullish sentiment that can be raised with the 12 over the 16 billion rate, we could easily be looking at. Another reason I believe AMC can rise is if we examine this particular image, which is the OBV, and compare it to its present OBV of 12 billion. We're not even talking about covering that, new investments, or further investors joining AMC at this point. AMC went well beyond 300 with the money that was raised alone essentially looking at the OBB value and where it was during the 72 run-up to restate our position, AMC could have made $79 per share with $2 billion, and the company is still at or around its peak. Additionally, just the money rates are included. The majority of people who paid that $79, though, who were in the 50 to 40 to 30 range before to 79, have never left AMC, so it's vital to remember that. When it is eventually found that the company's actual price is increasing, this shows that everyone is obviously investing in AMC. I think it's feasible to look at $79 and $300 because AMC's investors have stuck with the company. As you know, it is the 32nd day. We know AMC's actual pricing because its earnings per share, EPS, and profits surpass the record high short interest. However, there are still some CTBDTC people trying to trick you into thinking the price is correct. The cost. The AMC price is still at 4.90 in spite of all the action. Furthermore, keep in mind that the topic is still being debated in spite of all of these factors and the continuous efforts to claim that the price is real. You may still use logic and common sense to assess whether the pricing is authentic, even if you just consider the obvious. Do you believe that if no one sold AMC, no one saw the MC60, no one sold the AMC I-72, etc.? If AMC has been on the threshold list for 32 consecutive days, people are either shorting the stock or are overly leveraged. What are they doing? Why do they quickly acquire too much power over AMC? Even though everyone else has said that AMC would never be profitable, we are shorting it, which is why the price is dropping. Therefore, if AMC is profitable, why is the price still dropping, even though it is no longer losing money? Why is this happening again? An incredible message from today's Miracle House, Peter, the second quarter of 2023 for AMC Entertainment concluded on June 30th, 2023. The company's cash results at one penny per share, EPS, were positive surpassing the negative projection because it produced a lot more revenue. Good food and drink sales, which provide a larger profit margin than real ticket sales, are one of the four characteristics that stand out. Then, of course, comes the talk of the heart. As the day of reckoning draws near, it seems they will not make it through their time in America. We just have 53 days to find out, and it's clear that more people want the Chancellor to reconsider. Talking about the shorts is not a miracle since we have a very good chance of achieving our goals. It was a miracle since they gave it their all to accomplish their objectives. But it seems that we will get what we want instead of what they want. When that happens, the shorts will be totally burned out and we will be in a great position. Thank you for watching the movie. I will see you soon.